please stand. Face the rear of the church. Behold the life-giving cross on which was hung the salvation of the world. Behold the life-giving cross on which was hung the salvation of the world. Behold the life-giving cross on which was hung the salvation of the world. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, on the cross, your son experienced the forsakenness we deserve because of our sins. Through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit. One God now and forevermore. Amen. At the time of Micah, the people had forgotten the Lord, and so he declared his case against them. When Christ was on the cross, these approaches were again fitting. Thus says the Lord, what have I done to you, O my people? And wherein have I offended you? Answer me. For I have raised you up out of the prison house of sin and death, and you have delivered up your Redeemer to be scourged. For I have redeemed you from the house of bondage, and you have nailed your Savior to the cross. O oh, my people, holy Lord, holy and mighty God, holy and most merciful Redeemer, God eternal, lead us not to bitter death. O oh, Lord, have mercy. Thus says the Lord God, what have I done to you, O my people, and wherein have I offended you? Answer me, for I have conquered all your foes, and you have given me over and delivered me to those who persecute me. For I have fed you with my word and refreshed you with living water, and you have given me gall and vinegar to drink. O my people, holy Lord God, holy and mighty God, holy and merciful Redeemer. God eternal, allow us not to lose hope in the face of death and hell. O Lord, have mercy. Thus says the Lord God, what have I done to you, O my people? Wherein have I offended you? Answer me. What more could have been done for my vineyard than I have done for it? When I looked for good grapes, why did it yield only bad? My people, is this how you thank your God? O my people. Holy Lord God, holy and mighty God, holy and most merciful Redeemer, God eternal, be us steadfast in the true faith, O Lord, have mercy. Heavenly Father, we confess that we have forgotten to fear, love, and trust in you above all things. Forgive us. Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have forgotten to reflect our faith in you in our thoughts, words, and deeds. Forgive us. O Holy Spirit, we confess that we have forgotten that without your aid, we are helpless to change. Forgive us and renew with us clean hearts so that we find delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, our Heavenly Father, has not forgotten the promises he made purely by grace. He sent his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to take the punishment due each of us. Our sins are forgiven for the sake of the innocent suffering and death and glorious resurrection. Therefore, as a called and ordained servant of Christ, 
I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated for our offering.
feast of unleavened bread, also called the Passover, drew near. And Jesus said to his disciples, You know that after two days is the feast of the Passover, and the Son of Man will be given over to be crucified. Then the chief priests and the scribes assembled with the elders of the people in the palace of the high priest, who was called Caiaphas, and consulted how they might take Jesus craftily and put him to death. But they said, Not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar among the people, for they feared the people. Then Satan entered into Judas, surnamed Iscariot, one of the twelve. He went his way to the chief priests and captains and spoke together with them how he might betray Jesus to them. They were glad to hear him. He said to them, What will you give me to betray him to you? They promised to give him money and agreed with him for thirty pieces of silver. He accepted, and from that time he sought opportunity to betray him in the absence of the multitude. Then came the first day of unleavened bread when they sacrificed the Passover lamb. Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover that we may eat it. They said to him, Where do you want us to prepare it? He said to them, Go into the city, and when you have entered the city, watch for a man bearing a pitcher of water. When he meets you, follow him into the house where he enters. You shall say to the man who lives there, my, The master says to you, My time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at your house. Where is the room for me to eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room, furnished and prepared. There make ready for us. The disciples did as Jesus had directed them. They came into the city and found it as he had told them, and they made ready the Passover. When the hour was come, Jesus sat down and the apostles with him. As they were eating, he said, I have longed to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I shall not eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. As they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, this, blood is the, this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Truly, truly, I say to you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in the kingdom of my Father. When Jesus had said these things, his spirit was in turmoil. He bore witness and said, Truly, truly, I say to you that one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at each other, dumbfounded about whom he spoke. One of his disciples whom Jesus loved was leaning on Jesus' bosom. Simon Peter said to him, Ask who it is of whom he is speaking. That disciple, who was reclining on Jesus' chest, said to him, Lord, who is it? Jesus then answered, It is the one to whom I shall give the piece of bread after I have dipped it. He dipped the piece of bread he had in his hand and gave it to Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. After the piece of bread had been dipped, Satan entered into that one. Jesus said to him, What you are doing, do quickly.
they had sung a hymn, he went out, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. Then Jesus said to them, You will all be offended because of me this night, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. Peter answered and said to him, Even if all the others deny you, I will never deny you. Jesus said to him, Truly I say to you this night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But Peter said more vehemently, If I have to die with you, I will never deny you. And all the others said likewise. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be full of sorrow and turmoil. Then he said to them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Wait here and watch with me. He went on a little from them, about a stone's throw. He fell on his face and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but you will. His sweat fell on the ground like great drops of blood. When he got up from prayer, he came to his disciples and found them sleeping. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away a second time and prayed, saying, O oh, Father, if this cup may not pass from me, except I drink it, your will be done. When he returned, he found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy, and they did not know what to answer him. He left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. Look, the one who betrays me is here. Even while he was saying this, Judas, one of the twelve, came with a detachment and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees. They came to the place with lanterns and torches and weapons. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that would come upon him, went out to them and said, Whom do you seek? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said to them, I am he. Now, now he that was betraying Jesus had given them a sign, saying, The one whom I shall kiss, that is he. Seize him, and be sure to take him away securely. He went straight up to Jesus and said, Hail, Master, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Judas, do you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? Then Jesus said to the chief priests and the captains of the temple and the elders who had come out against him, Have you come out as against a thief with swords and clubs to take me? When I was with you day after day teaching in the temple, you did not lay your hands on me, but this is your hour and the hour of the power of darkness. All this has happened that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples forsook him and fled. Yeah. 
Those who had arrested Jesus brought him to the high priest's house, where the scribes and elders were assembled. Peter followed him far off, and so did another disciple. That disciple was known to the high priest and went in with Jesus into the palace of the high priest. But Peter stood outside at the door. So that other disciple who was known to the high priest went out and spoke to the doorkeeper and brought Peter in. He went in and sat with the servants to see the end. He was warming himself at the fire they had kindled in the middle of the courtyard. Meanwhile, the chief priests and the whole council were seeking evidence that they might make the case for a death sentence, but they could not find any. Many bore false witness against him, but their statements did not agree. Two stepped forward and said, We heard him say, I shall destroy this temple made with hands, and after three days I shall build another not made with hands. But even on this point, the evidence did not agree. Then the high priest stood up, moved to the center, and put this question to Jesus. Do you have no answer? What is this evidence they have given against you? But he was silent and gave no answer. Again, the high priest put a question to him and said, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? Jesus said, I am. You will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of God's power and coming with the clouds on heaven. The high priest tore his garments and said, Do we still need any witnesses? You have heard this blasphemy. What is your opinion? They all agreed that he was deserving of death. Then some of them began to spit on him. They blindfolded him, struck him, and said to him, Prophesy to us, O Christ, who is it that struck you? The guards beat him as they took him away. Meanwhile, Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. One of the maidservants of the high priest came and saw Peter warming himself. She looked at him closely as he sat in the light of the fire and said, You also were along with the man from Nazareth, that Jesus. Peter denied it and said, I do not know what you mean. He went out to the forecourt. Another maidservant saw him there and said to those who were standing around, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Peter denied it again with an oath. I do not know the man. A little later, those standing around said to Peter, Surely you are one of them. You are a Galilean. Your accent gives you away. Peter started calling down curses on himself and swore, I do not know the man. And immediately while he was still speaking, the cock crowed a second time, and the Lord turned and looked on Peter. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. Peter broke down and went out and wept bitterly. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests with the elders and the scribes held the court session with all the Sanhedrin. Then they bound him, led him away, and turned him over to Pilate. Then Judas, who had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, was sorry and brought back the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned, I have betrayed innocent blood. They said, What is that to us? That is your affair. Judas threw down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed. He went and hanged himself. The chief priest took the silver pieces and said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury, because it is the price of blood. They took counsel and bought with them the potter's field <clears throat> to bury strangers in. That is why to this day the field has been called the field of blood. In this way was fulfilled what was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying, They took the thirty pieces of silver, the price on, on him, of him on whom a price had been set by the children of Israel and gave them for the potter's field.
When they had bound Jesus, they led him from Caiaphas to the hall of judgment and gave him over to Pontius Pilate, the governor. It was early. They themselves did not go into the judgment hall so that they might not be defiled, but might eat the Passover. Pilate then went out to them and said, What charge do you bring against this man? They answered and said to him, If he were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. Then Pilate said to them, Take him then and judge him according to your law. The Jews said to him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death. So the word of Jesus was fulfilled, signifying by what death he should die. The charges they brought against him were, We found this fellow perverting the nation and forbidding us to pay taxes to Caesar, and saying that he himself is Christ a king. Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again and called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, Do you say this for yourself, or did others say it? To you about me. Pilate answered, Do you take me for a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have given you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then my servants would have fought that I should not be given over to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not of this world. Pilate therefore said to him, Are you a king then? Jesus answered, You say rightly that I am a king. I was born, and I came into the world that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone that is of the truth hears my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? After he had said this, he went out again to the Jews and said to them, I find no fault in this man. The chief priest kept laying one charge after another against him, but he answered not a word. Pilate questioned him again, saying, Do you answer nothing? See how many charges they lay against you. Jesus answered him not a word. Pilate was utterly amazed. He said to the chief priest and to the crowd, I find no case against this man. They press their charges more vehemently. He stirs up the people, teaching throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee to this place. When Pilate heard of Galilee, he asked whether this man was a Galilean. When he learned that he belonged in Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him on to Herod, who was, in, who was also in Jerusalem for those days. When Herod saw Jesus, he was delighted, for he had long wished to see him because of what he had heard of him. And he hoped to see him do a miracle. He questioned Jesus repeatedly, but he gave him no answer. The chief priests and the scribes stood there and vehemently accused him. Herod and his soldiers mocked him. They put a splendid robe on him and sent him back to Pilate. Herod and Pilate became friends with each other that same day, for before this they had been at enmity with each other. Now at the feast it was the governor's custom to release to the crowd any one prisoner whom they asked for. They had then a notorious prisoner called Barabbas, he was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection in the city. Pilate knew that it was out of malice that the chief priest handed Jesus over. Therefore he said to them, Do you want me to release for you Barabbas or Jesus, who is called the Christ? And they all cried out all together, saying, Again, Pilate addressed them, for he wished to release Jesus. He said to them, What shall I do then with Jesus, who is called Christ? What shall I do with him, whom you call the King of the Jews? They all cried out, Crucify him. Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? I have found no guilt worthy of death in him. I will therefore punish him and let him go. They cried out all the louder, Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. The soldiers of the governor led him away into the praetorium. They gathered the whole band of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a purple robe on him. When they had woven a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And they knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. They knelt down and did him homage, Pilate went out again and said to them, See, I bring him out to you, that you may know that I find him not guilty. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I do not find him guilty. 
The Jews answered him, We have a law, and by that law he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. When Pilate heard this, he was more afraid and went into the judgment hall and said to Jesus, Where are you from? Jesus gave him no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have the power to crucify you and I have the power to release you? Jesus answered, You would not have any power at all over me unless it had been given to you from above. For that reason, he who handed me over to you has the greater sin. This prompted Pilate to go on trying to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you let this man go, you are no friend of Caesar. Everyone who makes himself a king sets himself against Caesar. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down in the judgment seat in a place that is called the pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. It was the preparation of the Passover. About the sixth hour, he said to the Jews, Behold your king! They cried out, Pilate said unto them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but rather a riot was underway, he took water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this man. See to it yourselves. Then the people responded, Then Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, gave sentence, that it should be as they demanded. He released to them Barabbas, for whom they asked, the man who had been thrown into prison for insurrection and murder. He gave him over to their will to be crucified. The soldiers mocked him, stripped him of the purple robe, put his own clothes on him, and led him out to crucify him. now had charge of Jesus. Carrying his own cross, he went out of the city to a place called Skull Hill, in Hebrew, Golgotha. 
As he led him away, they laid hold on Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus, who was coming in from the country. On him they laid the cross, that he might bear it after Jesus. Following him was a great company of people and of women who bewailed and lamented him. It was the third hour, and there they crucified him. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. The two criminals they also crucified with him, one on his right and the other on his left, with Jesus in the middle. The scripture was then fulfilled, which says, and he was numbered with transgressors. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they cast lots to divide his clothes and decide what each should take. They made four parts, one for each soldier. There remained his tunic, which was without seam, woven in one piece from top to bottom. They said to one another, let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to decide who shall have it. The scripture is thus fulfilled, which says, they divided my garments among them and cast lots for my clothing. These things the soldiers did and sitting down, they kept watch over him there. Over his head was put the charge against him. Pilate wrote the notice to be put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. This title was read by many of the Jews, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near to the city, and it was written in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. The chief priests of the Jews then said to Pilate, You should not write the king of the Jews, but that this man said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. People stood by watching. Those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself. If you are the son of God, come down from the cross. So also the chief priests with the scribes and the elders mocked him to one another, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, now come down from the cross that we may see and believe. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the Son of God. The soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him wine and saying, If you are the King of the Jews, save yourself. The thieves who were crucified with him also reviled him. And one of the criminals who hung there with him railed at him, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same condemnation? And we, indeed justly, for we are getting what we deserve for what we have done. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus said to him, truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Oh. 
to the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing near, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to his disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his own home. About the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of them were standing there, heard it. They said, He is calling for Elijah. After this, Jesus knew that all things, <clears throat> that all things were accomplished. Fulfilling the scriptures, he said, I thirst. There was a jar of wine standing there. One of the men immediately ran to get a sponge. He filled it with wine, put it on a reed, and held it up to his mouth and gave it to him to drink. Others said, Wait and see if Elijah will come to save him. When Jesus had received the wine, he cried out with a loud voice, It is finished. Then he said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook. And the rocks split, the tombs broke open, and the bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. They came out of the tombs, and after Jesus' resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many people. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he died, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. It was the day of preparation before the Sabbath, and this was... Passover Sabbath, therefore, so that the bodies should not remain on the crosses during the Sabbath, the Jews asked Pilate to have the legs broken and the bodies removed. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and the other who was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus, they saw that he was already dead. They did not break his legs, but one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once there came out blood and water. One who saw it is our witness, and his testimony is true. He knows that he tells the truth that you also may believe. These things were done that the scriptures should be fulfilled. Not one of his bones shall be broken. And again, another scripture says, They shall look on him whom they have pierced. By this time, evening had come. A respected member of the council, Joseph of Arimathea, was one who was looking for the kingdom of God, a good and righteous man who had not consented to their purpose and deed. He was a disciple of Jesus secretly, for he feared the Jews. Now he took courage and went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was astonished that he could be dead already. He called for the centurion and asked him whether Jesus was already dead. When he was assured by the centurion that it was so, Pilate granted Joseph the corpse and commanded that it be given over to him. Joseph brought fine linen and came and took the body of Jesus. Nicodemus came also, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pound weight. It was he who had first come to Jesus by night. They then took the body of Jesus and wrapped it in linen cloths with the spices, as is the burial custom of the Jews. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb, where no one had ever been buried. Joseph laid the body in his own new tomb, which he had hewn out in the rock, and rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and departed.
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 